Hi everybody, this is lesson 1.5, the title of the lesson, whose footprint is bigger. So let's read the specific objectives for this lesson. So in this lesson, students will understand that the magnitude of large numbers seen in place values and in scientific notation, proportions are one of way to compare numbers of varying magnitude, different comparison may be needed to accurately compare two or more quantities. Here's the specific mathematical objectives that we'll be covering in this lesson. Uh, we'll be able to express numbers in scientific notation, estimate ratios of large numbers, calculate ratio of large numbers, and then use multiple computations to compare quantity. Compare and rank numbers, including those of different magnitude, millions, billions, and so on. We already dealt with the large numbers in the first lesson. Uh, here we will uh, do more operations with large numbers, specifically talking about comparisons. So the problem situation number one is talking about comparing populations. So in this problem situation, you're going to compare the population of China and the United States, and you'll compare the population of each of these countries to the population of the world. As you know, China has the largest population in the world, India is number two, and the third largest country in the world is the United States. The data that is presented here is somewhat outdated, it's from 2014. Uh, the population of both countries had increased since then, but the numbers are still relevant for us to do some math with, uh, with them. So let's look at the first question. The population of the U.S. in mid-2014 was 318 million people. Note, 318 is followed by six places, so this is measured in millions. The population of Earth at this same time was about 7.2 billion. One way to compare these numbers is to find the difference between them. So the first question is asking you to find the difference and think about whether this is a useful way to compare these populations. So first, can you go ahead and write population of the Earth, 7.2 billion, in expanded standard form? I'll give you a moment. Okay, so Earth has a population, or had, right, because we're looking at 2014, of 7.2 billion. So look, billion means nine figures after a decimal point. All right, so just a little review, uh, 1,000 is three, million is six, these are major magnitude, billion is nine, and trillion is 12. So these are the ones that we are concerned for most part. Alrighty, so we'll see these large numbers appearing today throughout the lesson. So 7.2 billion means we gotta take the decimal point and we gotta shift to 12 places. Now that number two is already takes a place. It already takes a place, so that means we need additional eight. And since so there's nothing there after two, we're going to replace those with eight additional zeros. Nine, nine zeros, but eight, since two will still hold a place of one of those figures. So let's write that down. We got two, and then we got, uh, so we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And remember, we separate each magnitude of the comma, all right, so check this out. This is a thousand, this is a million, and this is a billion. So you read it as seven billion to hundred million people on Earth in 2014, approximately. So that's Earth, and the United States was already given in the standard form. So we're going to write it underneath, matching the size as the size of the Earth. Notice it has six significant figures, and then 318 is how many of those magnitudes we got. All right, you see, this part right here doesn't go more than one place, so it's still staying within that magnitude. So that's what to remember. If you have six complete uh, cycles, they call cycles, then it's a million, nine complete cycles, then it's a billion, and so on, and that number, after it completes the number of cycles, tells you how many. 
So the Earth has 7 billion to 100 million, while the United States has 318 million. So go ahead and subtract those two numbers, and then, uh, uh, you know, we'll check. Alrighty, so when I'm subtracting this, I'm going to use my calculator. I don't have to do it by hand. Those zeros I'm just going to bring down, and then the rest I'm just going to grab my calculator and I'll subtract, and I get 6,882 and then million. Notice how I said it. A thousand and then the million, which makes that million is six thousand is three together it makes a billion so this is six billion eight hundred and eighty two million people now how would you put that in a sentence well we're comparing us with the earth so we subtracting whenever we subtract something we use a word like more so earth has Six billion eight hundred and eighty two million more people than the US. Do you think that's a good way to understand the size of the United States relative relatively to the to the US? I don't think so. It doesn't tell me much. It doesn't tell me how big the United States compared as a, a you know as as a whole Earth. Like, is it as a big chunk or is it not? So question number two is asking you, what are the, some other ways you can compare the population of the United States to the population of the Earth? So can you take a moment and write a couple of words? Like, what can you do mathematically to compare them? I'll give you a moment. All right, so you might have stated things like a ratio, a percent, maybe a fraction, all of these, even a decimal you can put it in here, they all are related and they're all going to be useful. And that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. So take a look at question number three. So question number three is telling us that we're gonna use a ratio. And a ratio is an expression that compares two quantities. How? Well, they often read in as fraction. Ratio is a fraction uh, that relates one thing to another. So let's take a look at question number three. So question number three tells us that in mid 2014, the population of China was 1.363. We can say that one point uh, and then one billion and then 363 that part. And that would be out of a thousandth of a billion. So it's kind of weird, right? Well, it's billion and close to a half maybe, right? So 0.36, maybe you can round it to 0.4. Well, there are various ways we could write it. But the point now is we would like to use a ratio to compare population of China uh, in 2014 to the population of Earth in 2014. So let me bring you the number for the Earth. So the Earth in 2014, or the world, had a population of 7.2 billion. So it's asked us to write the ratio to compare population of China to the population of Earth as a ratio. And how does that work? Well, you write it as a fraction. You replace the word two with a fraction bar. You put China in a numerator and you put the Earth population in a denominator. Okay, so what I would like for you to do is to write that fraction and then go ahead and see if you can convert that fraction into a percent and choose uh, the answer um, that you have, that, that's available on a poll. Alrighty, so let's review. So we're going to put, as it says here, China to the Earth. And here's an important thing for you to note. You see how both Earth and uh, China are measured their populations in billions. Since they're both in billions, you do not need to write the numbers in standard notation. If we compare, like say, apples to apples, if they're both apples, you could use them as a fraction. So if you have billions and billions, you can write them exactly the way you see it. So what I mean here is that the China has 1.363 billion people, right here, you can even write the word billion, well, Earth 
has 7.2 billion. All right, we grab our calculator. When we do this division, we do the numerator divided by the denominator, and you're going to get 0 0.1893 and change. Okay, you can round this. Well, you're not going to round it off right away. We already kind of did. Okay, it didn't say. It says you pick how many decimals you want. You want to just not round too much. I would say when working with the decimals, at least four places would be my recommendation. Because once we convert that into percent, what do we do? Do you guys still remember? Well, when you're converting that into percent, you're multiplying it by 100, meaning you move the decimal two places to the right, and then you get this. If you want to round it to the nearest percent, that's also okay. 19%. So that's why you kind of want to have four decimal places. So then when you move that decimal point to place over, you have some places remaining that would allow you to round. All right, now how do we put that in the perspective, like in a sentence to understand uh, how big is China relative in its population compared to the Earth population? Well, you can think of the world, or well actually it is, a uh, sphere or a circle, if you look in two dimensions, right? And 19% is close to 20. And 20% 20 is 20 out of 100 is actually one fifth. All right, so one fifth of the world population would be the population of China. So the way we got to do, we got to divide this into five pieces and then we can take, um, you know, we can take uh, one. So one, two, three, four, five. So we got the five pieces like that. And then this would be the slice that would represent the population of China. About, about. So you can kind of see it. So that gives us an idea of size. And that's what the ratios are all about. It allows us to represent uh, and compare numbers a little bit better than just saying how many more. It tells us to give us the picture of how big something is. All right, so question number four is asking us to compare China's population to the population of the United States. And listen carefully, it says using a ratio with the U.S. population as a reference value. So let's highlight that term. Reference value is the, is the number that you're going to put in the denominator of your ratio. Okay, so that's important, all right? So when we're setting this up, it says use the United States as a reference value. Okay, so let's try this out. So it says put the China in the numerator and put the United States in the denominator and then use that as a comparison. All righty, so now let me bring you the number for the United States from 2014. That number is or was... 318 million and it was written this way the standard form all right so one qu one thing that I would like for you to do is to go ahead and write the uh, population of China the same way as the population of the United States meaning in the standard form because this one 318 million does not have a billion next to it so we can't just put them in a ratio without bringing them to the same uh, appearance so they both need to be written in standard form so what would the population of China look like in standard form okay so let's review so it is a billion billion again means nine figures after the decimal point check this out now it already has three places so if it already has three places you need uh, six additional zeros so let's do that. So we got one comma instead of the decimal point, and then we got 363, three, so that three places, and we need altogether nine. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Note, nine figures, not nine zeros. That's a common misconception. Look at this very carefully so you could see what's going on. So when you see a billion, 
you start counting not from the end of the number, but you start counting from the decimal point. Okay, so that's how it's going to work. You you uh, move it uh, three and then six more. Now, when we use a calculator, we shouldn't be putting such big numbers in the calculator, even though we could. I would just go ahead and uh, cancel those because they are the same. Uh, we reduce the fraction, and then I'm just going to put 1,363 divided by 318. Notice, by the way, those numbers can be written like this. Maybe some of you did it that way. Uh, the population of the United States is 318 million, right? That we know, we can see that. So if you want to write China also in millions, then 1.363 billion actually becomes 1,363 million. A thousand million is a billion. If it, if, if it, if it makes sense, use it. If not, all right, both in standard form. All right, so then once you do this, you got the uh, number 4.29. All right, so you got 4.29. What does that mean? How do you write that in a sentence? It says write a sentence that interprets this ratio in a given context. Well, let me, let me give you a chance to, to, to write it. Okay, so now let's review it. So we say China a population of China is 4.29 and the keyword that we can use when we say ratio we say uh, the word times let me highlight that word it's a pretty important word so when you do a ratio you say that population of China is 4.29 times and you don't say times more or more times. You don't use the word more. You just say times. And you say times what? The population of the United States. So that's the way that we could do it. Notice, you might be uh, thinking of, well, what if I converted that into percent? You can. We've seen percentages higher than 100, and we talk about the Affordable Care Act, right? So if you use the percent, you could, you would say the population of China is 4.29%, but you're not going to say times, you're going to say of, and then you're going to use the same connected. So there are some conventions that we use in mathematics. Well, it's not mathematics, and the way we talk or describe numbers in quantitative reasoning, depending on what things that you use. So if you use percent, you use the word percent of. Right, the population of China is 19% of the population of Earth. You could say that. In this context, since China is larger than the United States, and you can say it's 4.29 times the population, or you can say 429% off. Another thing that you can also check out, if you take this number, 4.29, and you flip it over, Like that, 1 over 4.29. You're going to get 1 over 4.29, I'm putting it in my calculator, is about 23%. So then what that means if you flip it over, that means you're flipping over this entire fraction. So that would say that the U.S. population, in terms of its size, is about 23% of the population of China. There are so many ways that you can interpret this, which would be correct as long as you use the correct words. Now, if your question, like in this case, asked to put the United States in the denominator, and your fraction results in a number higher than one, then you use the word times. If you get a fraction, like in this case, that's less than one, then it would make sense to convert it into percent. So we usually, when we have proper percentages, we convert them, you, you, we use them in a sentence. But when the percentages are not pro proper, then it's a common place is to leave it as uh, not a percent and just say, you know, uh, something is that times larger, okay? You can, you can do this in everyday life setting. You can say, well, the cost of taking an express bus is about $6, right? I think it's six something. Um, the MTA Express, Express Bus. 
while taking uh, a, a regular uh, subway ride is two seventy five, which is about three dollars. So taking express bus is six. Taking a train is about three. So that means the express bus costs two times as much. You see, two times. You, you wouldn't say two hundred percent. It's six divided by three, two times or twice. So it's twice more expensive. You see what I'm saying? So the goal to understand is when, when you ask to compute ratios, you write them as fractions, and then you either use the word like times, or you use the word percent off, okay? And that would be clear from the question itself. Alrighty, let's move on to the next uh, problem situation. So here's a problem situation talking about the water footprint. You can read this passage. All right, it's talking about how much water uh, being used. So I encourage you to read this completely. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and refer you to this, and you can pause this video to read it, but I'm going to start with this table. So we have, again, three countries, the three most populous country in the world, and this number, uh, this uh, data provides uh, information between the years 1996 and 2005 it gives what we call average numbers okay so uh, three countries here are the populations of them in that period of time and those numbers are in thousands okay so we're gonna address that in our first question what what does that mean and we're using you know everybody use water for cleaning drinking cooking and you name it right the water is the source of life uh, and here we have how much water are used by the entire country in a whole year and it's measured into 10 to the 9 cubic meters so we're going to talk about what that means all right so we're going to go ahead and just understand how big those numbers are we're going to write each numbers using what we call the standard form the standard form meaning that you are just writing it out with all the places so look first to write the population so since it says in thousand what does that mean it just simply means add on three more figures so we're kind of going back to what we started this lesson with right so the thousand means three the uh, million means six, the billion means nine, and then what do we got? Trillion means 12. So if you want to do it in thousands, so we're gonna go ahead and take that number, and then we just add on three additional zeros to each one of them, all right? So that's not too bad. And then this one right here as well. And now you kind of see the familiar setting in terms of how big those countries are. So the United States is in millions. Here you have a full magnitude, so 336, so that's in uh, millions. While India and China's populations have nine significant uh, periods, so that would be in billions. So China is one, and India is also one something. And again, that data is a little older uh not the current numbers now it's bigger united states is now about 340 million while both india and china i believe they're about 1.4 1 uh billion 400 million so they they very close to one another at this point in 2021 all righty so what are footprint so let's talk about what that means so cubic meter think of a cube just like a box that arrives let's say from amazon you got the box right three-dimensional box and you measure it so it's gonna be a meter here a meter here and a meter here and fill it with water that will be one such box so when say 10 to the 9 10 to the 9 as we have seen earlier I think lesson 1 you, you reviewed this in homework 10 to the 9 means 10 times 10 times 10 times not 10 uh, so that would mean that you have nine zeros so that's the same thing as if you were to say a billion. So that means it's a billion. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go ahead and uh, take each of those numbers and then we're going to add nine figures to them. 
All right, I know it's kind of long to write this all, but this is what the question was asking. That's why you have so much space right there. All right, so here we go. So we got nine. So all of these are going to have nine. So this one is a uh, billion. This one right here is in trillion. And this one right here is trillion. So let me ask you, which country uses the most uh, water? Yeah, China uses the most water. But we're not going to, but China is also much, 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 much bigger. And therefore, it would be more useful to look at this and, rep and calculate how much water is used per capita. Per capita means per person. And then we're going to rank them from highest to lowest. All right. So the order at which it's written says do water and then see how much used per person. So we take the water and we split it equally among the people that are there. So we're going to cal calculate something that's called an average consumption. So go ahead. I'm going to give you some time to... Uh, divide water by people go ahead alrighty so let's review those numbers that you've got so for China well for, for all of them you're going to be taking water and you're going to be dividing it by the people not other way around okay so that would mean for instance for China you're going to take the water that they use pretty large numbers so you don't want to miss any of those zeros that's how much water they use and we're going to divide by their large population you can use any scientific calculator or whatever even uh, uh, whatever calculator and you can put this whole thing in you can also reduce this uh, and when you do so, once you divide, you're going to get about 1,071 cubic feet of water per person or per capita. You see what happened? Water divided by the people. All right, that's how much is used per year. So imagine those 1,000 Amazon back boxes of water. That's how much uh, one person is used on average. Okay, and then you do the same thing for the other ones. I'm not gonna write the whole numbers. You have them in the previous table. So here we got uh, for India about 100, 1,089 cubic feet per capita. And for the United States is 2,841 cubic feet per capita. So now if you rank them, the largest one ends up being the United States and the other two, India and China, are pretty close. But if we rank them, uh, yeah, it will be one, two, three. So actually the smaller of the three countries uses the most water per capita and that's significantly smaller. Now to do the calculation here, we can, question number three, asking us to kind of first, uh, compare population of China to the population of the United States. Uh, we did this sort of before, but here we want to use the numbers that are on that table. Now notice again, it says how many times, you see the word times is used, uh, larger the population of China to the United States. That means you're going to put the population of China in a numerator and then the US is going to go in the denominator so the population of China in that table was 1277208 people, while US was 288,958 people. So here the ratio would be about, you know, sort of the same number. China is about four and something times larger than the United States. Okay, make sure you also write that in a sentence, just like we did it before. 
But now, if you look at question four, it's asking you how much more water does the average person in the U.S. use as compared to the person in China. So now the sentence actually flips, or the ratio flips, because it's asking us to compare the U.S. compared to China in terms of the water usage. So here the ratio is the other way around. That's what the question is asking us to determine. The way the sentence is written will dictate you how to write down the ratio. So the U.S. to China consumption is 2,841 cubic feet of water per person divided by the, the, uh, the China's consumption per person is 1,071 cubic feet per person and that number is 2.65 times. Try to write that in a sentence, okay? And that would say that the average consumption of water per capita in the U.S. is 2.65 times the consumption in China. All right, so if you're thinking about journalism and reporting your findings and writing in on in on a uh, on a newspaper or web some some article, you know things like this are important because if you want to deliver some kind of information, you should be able to eloquently to describe it and to bring up uh, correct numbers. So you can say, you know, while uh, population of China is almost four and a half times the population of the United States, the average person in the United States uses almost three times as much water. You see how it goes? So uh, that tells us the message is that um, the water consumption is not the same across the globe, especially in these uh, in the three largest countries in the in the world. Alrighty, and I believe this question for B is is it's, it's there's an editing error here it's actually asking you for the same thing it's not a it's also asking for the average consumption so we already answered the question so that's it all right so take a look at this there's a brief summary of what the scientific notations are all right so you might remember this from before of what the scientific notation is we will see this sometimes but we're not going to be dealing with the scientific notation as much but sometimes the calculator can give us the number such that you know we don't understand what it represents so I want to present this from the exam from the question itself All right, this is the last question in this lesson so it says in 2012 the population of Japan was 128 million people alright and the per capita consumption and let's write that down is 364 1,293 gallons per person per person that's how much water is used per person it's not in cubic feet it's in gallons all right so that's what number appears to be uh, different from before but here it is okay so it's 364,293 gallons and the uh, that's per one person one person okay so that's one person is using that so much water in Japan but the number of, and, and the number of people is 128,000 million. That's the total number of people. It's asking us what was the total annual water consumption in gallons, meaning what's the total? So if one person uses this much, and that's how many people are there, what are you going to do with those numbers? All right, it's like, you know, one gallon of gas costs $3.50. I'm just, just like an example. So, and then you will buy uh, 10 gallons. How much would it be? What do you do with those two numbers? Okay, or let's maybe do something like th that has per person. Well, it takes, uh, you know, you're organizing a, a party, 
a, a kids party and the expenses are that it's going to be about 25 uh 25 dollars per kid all right and you plan to invite uh 20 kids then how much would it be total we're going to talk about those type of things but i think it's kind of logical if you know how much of something per one and you have that many if you take these two things you're going to be multiplying them okay you're going to be multiplying them so i'm going to grab my calculator and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to multiply the, those two numbers so 364 293 multiplied by 128 million okay my calculator gives me this i'm using a scientific calculator it gives me this what is that how do you read this all right we know that this is talking about gallons but this doesn't you know doesn't t tell us the size is it a million is it a billion is it a trillion what is it so that's how you read this so this is called a scientific notation and that basically we already seen it earlier today when we talk about the water uh, consumption there earlier 10 to the 13 meaning you have 13 figures additional all right, so if you have a decimal point and you ask to move 13 additional figures, you just go ahead and you move the decimal point that many places. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, and we need 13. So let's go ahead and do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You see what happens? You're basically moving this 13 places where you're counting these as being 5 and then additional 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 zeros. Together it gives us the 13. Then we're going to go ahead and put the commas here. So it's 3, 6, 9, 12. 12 is a trillion. So it's 46.6 trillion gallons about and of course if you want to report this in newspaper you're not going to be writing it this way you're not going to be writing it this way you're going to be reporting it that way using magnitudes all right so to recap what we did in this lesson we talk about large numbers and we also use them for most part of that lesson is to setting up the ratios and interpreting those ratios okay and at the end we also seen uh, an application where we knew what the uh, ratio was and we applied this to the population and we were able to figure out the total consumption by multiplying and we dealt with the very large numbers. And that is the end of this lesson.